Hey everyone, and welcome to Skill Cap. I'm Notorious Dub, and in this guide, you're going to learn how you can get perfect aim in Valorant just like the pros. Whether you're a beginner, just starting out, or an FPS veteran, I can guarantee there are a ton of techniques specific to Valorant that you've never heard of before. This information has been created by the top Valorant players and coaches, countless hours of research, and is backed by scientific studies to form the top 10 tips and tricks for aiming that you're about to learn. Trust me, this is the only guide you'll ever need on improving your aim as is designed to be the most accurate and effective aiming guide you simply won't find anywhere else. Before we get into that though, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell icon, and like the video. We here at Skillcapped work with the best players in Valorant with one goal in mind, helping you become a better player. So if you want to improve and stay ahead of the competition, make sure to hit that subscribe button as there are a ton more premium guides on the way. All right. Starting with the first thing every single player needs to do the second they load into Valorant, and that's find your optimal mouse sensitivity. The most common mistake players make is having their mouse sensitivity far too high. The reason why this is a problem is that it gives you less control over your aim. For example, imagine an enemy appears and you have to flick your mouse to hit a headshot. Well, you aim slightly too far to the right, and suddenly you see how you have to make a very small adjustment with your mouse to get it back on their head. When your sensitivity is too high, you can't make these pinpoint accurate movements. To find out if you're making this mistake, hop into practice mode, look straight ahead, and make sure your mouse is placed on the leftmost portion of your mouse pad. Then, drag your mouse all the way to the right side. You shouldn't have moved past the wall behind you or more than 180 degrees. If you did, adjust your sensitivity accordingly, then retest. This is a good rule of thumb to follow in order to establish a base sensitivity for yourself. The golden question on everyone's mind is what sensitivity do the best Valorant players use? Well, in order to answer this question, you first need to understand the difference between these three things, in-game sensitivity, DPI, and eDPI. Let's start with DPI. DPI stands for dots per inch and is a measurement of how sensitive a mouse is. The higher a mouse DPI, the farther the cursor on your screen will move when you move the mouse. There aren't any competitive advantages to having a higher DPI. In fact, most of the best FPS players in the world play with low DPI settings. Here's where it can get a bit confusing though. As yes, DPI affects your mouse's sensitivity, but so does the in-game setting. For example, Summit 1G has a DPI of 400 and an in-game sensitivity of 0.47. In comparison, Ninja has a DPI of 800 and an in-game sensitivity of 0.75. So how do you know which player's mouse is more sensitive and by how much? This is where eDPI comes in, which stands for effective dots per inch. We calculate the eDPI by multiplying the mouse DPI with the in-game sensitivity. For example, Summit 1G has a DPI of 400 and a sense of 0.47, which means he has an eDPI of 188. And Ninja, who had a DPI of 800 and a sense of 0.75, has an eDPI of 600. This is how we can figure out that Summit 1G has a lower sensitivity at 188 eDPI and is exactly how you can calculate your true sensitivity and compare it to the pros. Still, it doesn't answer our previous question, what sensitivity do the best Valorant players use? Well, we actually have access to that information, and the average eDPI of the best Valorant players so far is 382. You have to keep in mind though, a lot of these players are coming from other games that require a higher sense like Apex Legends, Fortnite, and Overwatch. So that number seems to be slightly inflated, and our experts anticipate that the average eDPI of future pro Valorant players will continue to lower. As a general rule though, your eDPI on Valorant should be within 200 to 400. As long as you fall within these numbers, or are close to them, you should be okay. Now, with a lower sensitivity, you have more control and more accuracy, but some of you may run into the problem of not having enough mouse pad space. This is why we recommend you get a large, extended mouse pad that can fit both your keyboard and mouse, so when you're aiming and flicking, you never run out of space. If you don't go that route, at a minimum though, all pros use a mouse pad that is at least 15 inches in length and 18 inches in width. Alright, now that you have the most important foundation established, your mouse sensitivity, we can move on to actual in-game techniques, starting with crosshair placement. Most players mistakenly think that your skill in aiming is all about flicking straight onto an opponent's head. This is not the case at all in Valorant. Instead, crosshair placement becomes just as valuable as raw accuracy when it comes to getting headshots. For example, You'll find most players making the crucial mistake of constantly keeping their crosshair at the enemy's body or foot level. 
This forces them to make a quick flick when they spot the opponent from a large distance. Instead, what you want to be doing is always keeping your crosshair at head height. This way, as you turn a corner and spot an enemy, you only have to make a very small adjustment, letting you not only be more accurate, but also react faster as you have to cover less pixels with your crosshair. The best Valorant players take this a step further by actually memorizing the most common angles the enemy will be at when they turn corners. For example, on the map Haven, it's extremely common at the start of the round for players to peek into Garage. If you don't know the standard headshot level of the defender in the window, then you'll constantly be having to make big, inconsistent flakes towards their heads. However, if you memorize that your cursor has to be in this position lined up on the garage door, then when you peek, you'll be at head level, can instantly left click, or only have to make a minor adjustment from left to right. This is knowledge you want to build as you play the game. When you check a corner and an enemy catches you by surprise, take a conscious note of the position they played. The next time you check that corner, place your crosshair so that it will be at head level, and just like that you'll start winning so many more gunfights. What happens when your crosshair placement falls short though? This is where the technique of flicking comes in. Sometimes an enemy peeks from an unexpected spot and you have to quickly aim at them and shoot. This movement is called a flick, and sometimes flicking is your only way out of a bad situation. Flicking is the fundamental aiming movement that makes up the foundation of all shots. On the most basic level, a flick is a quick, snappy movement to try and hit an enemy. But for the pros, a flick is a reactionary shot from muscle memory that some people would call inhuman reactions. That begs the question though, how can I flick like the pros? Well, it all comes down to practice. However, not all practice is the same. The routines we're going to show you here are the same routines that the best FPS players have been implementing for years. I guarantee that if you learn these techniques and follow our routine, you'll be top fragging in no time. And the best part of it all is that this all takes place in Valorant's practice mode. Step one to learning to flick is repetition. Simply enough, you want to go into the practice arena, grab yourself a Vandal, press F3, and enable bot armor. Then shoot the practice square to spawn all of the bots and start clicking on heads for five minutes. This is a great way to warm up your arm, wrist, and eyes before heading into more advanced routines. Once you're finished, press F3 again and select Eliminate 50. This time we're focusing on the reactionary part of the movement. Try to react to the bots spawning and immediately flick and headshot them. For now, you're probably noticing you're not fully accurate with your flick and still have to adjust to hit the headshot. This is called a micro adjustment and it's completely normal. Low sensitivity is going to help you with these micro adjustments, but for now, embrace them because sometimes the best players have to do that as well. Once you've done that for about five more minutes or two to three cycles, you're going to be using the easy, medium, or hard setting depending on the skill level. In this section, we're focusing on being able to incorporate what you're training into an unconscious movement just like the pros. Focus on flicking to and headshotting the bots as soon as they spawn. Just like before, but this time you're doing it as quickly as possible and shooting immediately after you flick. Focus on trusting your flick because the ultimate goal is to hit the first shot. And although in games you may have to micro adjust, you also have to develop the confidence and ability to hit that first shot. By getting comfortable with this practice routine, you'll find yourself getting better at flicking and hitting headshots more often than normal. With flicking your enemy was standing still, but in a real game, enemies move and strafe unpredictably. This can result in you losing an aim fight to a total noob because they're running and spraying. Tracking is the aiming technique that lets you avoid that situation. Tracking is used whenever you're already aiming at your target and you want to keep aiming at that target by reacting to and predicting his movements. Tracking is also necessary because it's the basic control of your crosshair. And without control of your crosshair, your crosshair placement and follow-up shots are going to be in shambles. Don't worry though, because getting comfortable with the following techniques will help you get those easy kills and stop dying to running noobs. The first step to practicing tracking is to spawn one bot, stand a distance away from them, straight from side to side and keep your crosshair on their head. Once you're comfortable with this, you can start walking circles around the target. Again, keeping your crosshair focused on their head. To master this technique, set the bot to strafe and walk circles around the bot at the same time, while keeping your crosshair placed on their head and reacting to their movements. Although this isn't the most exciting practice, I promise you, mastering this technique is vital because flick shotting may look flashy and cool, but picking up the easy kills and finishing off the tough targets consistently wins you rounds. 
Moving in Valorant makes these aiming techniques more complicated. As you're not standing still shooting practice bots, you're often moving. And movement in this game affects your aim. In Valorant, the different movement mechanics in game all affect your accuracy in different ways, and by mastering movement with your aim, you truly become an aim god. So let's break it down. Starting with running. Running in Valorant is the normal movement state, and you receive a massive accuracy penalty for running or jumping while shooting. You never want to be running and shooting at opponents with weapons, as there's almost no chance your bullets will hit them. But there are two exceptions to this rule. First is when you're up close to an opponent around 5 meters or closer. In this situation, it's okay to run and gun since the enemy is so close that your bullets don't have much time to truly spread out. This is also why the further away you are, the worse spraying becomes, as the further distance gives your bullets more time to travel away from where you're actually aiming. The second exception is with shotguns. Shotguns do not receive the accuracy penalty when running or jumping, so stay on the move whenever shooting a shotgun. Next, we have standing still. This is the standard way to shoot. Standing still is the baseline for recoil control and first shot accuracy and is the go-to when shooting at enemies. This is the movement state you want to achieve, and don't worry, there are techniques we'll be getting into shortly that explain how exactly to go from running to standing still efficiently. Then there's crouching. Crouching in Valorant slightly decreases your recoil, making your shots more accurate and easier to control, but just as important, it changes the hitbox of your head. When the best players get into aim fights that last a bit too long, they crouch. When you crouch, you're changing the target that your enemies are aiming at while simultaneously making yourself more accurate. So when your fights last a little longer than expected, hit that crouch button so those bullets fly right over your head. Next, we have walking. Valorant has a unique mechanic that makes the first shot of your gun more accurate than most games when walking. It's actually kind of crazy. For example, Let's say you're trying to hit this target that's 20 meters away. If you run and shoot, your bullets fly all over the place. And if you're standing still, you can shoot in bursts, and they're nearly perfectly accurate. Well, check this out. If you walk, your first few bullets are still super accurate. Sure, walking and shooting still isn't as accurate as standing still, and is suboptimal, but if you're walking around a corner, don't be afraid to immediately shoot before you come to a standstill, as you're more accurate than you realize. Lastly, we have ropes. Ropes is the most unique movement factor in Valorant, and according to Valorant dev Man Wolf Axe Boss, the accuracy penalty on ropes is a bit worse than walking. So a very useful strategy is to quickly peek up and down on the ropes, rapidly moving your hitbox while trying to hit shots because you're still very accurate, and since there is no acceleration on ropes, you can instantly go full speed below the angle. Keep in mind, holding shift and going up the ropes will increase your accuracy even further making this tactic very strong. Mastering movement in Valorant is a defining factor. Many people have and are developing good aim, but it's incorporating proper movement in with your aim that makes the difference. And this leads us into our sixth aiming tip, the technique of strafe shooting. We've already gone through a ton of super useful tips, and yet we still have five more to go. And this is the skill cap difference you can come to expect from this channel comprehensive detailed guys that actually help you improve every day so make sure to subscribe hit that bell icon and like the video as we'll be regularly releasing content just like this strafe shooting is a movement technique that allows you to be evasive hard to hit yet accurate while shooting this is a mechanic that allows the pros to clutch pistol rounds and win long-range engagements all while avoiding being headshotted so what exactly is strafe shooting it's when you first move in one direction, let's say to the left by holding A, then you immediately turn in the other direction by letting go of A and then holding D. You'll notice that right before your character changes directions, you're technically standing still. It's in this precise moment that you can shoot and be entirely accurate. This technique is best used at log ranges, because at these long distances, roughly past 20 meters, spraying becomes highly ineffective. Since you only want to shoot in either single shot or three shot burst at this point, you can incorporate strafe shooting to make yourself harder to hit. For example, imagine one player doesn't know how to strafe shoot, they'd be standing completely still trying to tap on the enemy's head, all while being a sitting duck. Meanwhile, the enemy is strafe shooting, moving back and forth and timing his burst as he changes direction to have perfect accuracy. This makes him extremely difficult to hit. A good way to get comfortable with this technique is to practice one direction at a time. Hold A, release A, and then hold D with a quick tap on the left click. Practice doing this over and over until you get the timing down. 
Then switch to the other direction, hold D, release D, and hold A with a quick tap on the left quick. Once you have mastered both directions, try doing them back to back. Hold A, release A, hold D, quickly tap the left click. Release D, then hold A and quickly tap the left click, repeating this back and forth and shooting on that in-between time of swapping directions. Then, once you've mastered going back and forth, spawn bots on Eliminate 50 and practice strafe shooting while also aiming at the bots. This is a mandatory movement you need to master if you want to take your game to the next level. Moving on to tip number 7, and that's your crosshair settings. Your crosshair is your signature in Valorant, and it's the source of the most asked question to streamers and pros. What's your crosshair settings? Your crosshair can be far too big and distracting, making your reaction time slower, or too small and obscure that you lose track of it and miss a vital headshot. There is no perfect crosshair, and you'll even see streamers swap their crosshair from time to time, but there are some must-haves, tips, and a very important trick that you should keep in mind. For beginner crosshairs, you'll want to keep your outer lines, movement error, and firing error on. This way you have a visual cue to help you realize when you're accurate and when you're inaccurate. You'll notice when you're standing still, your crosshair is at its smallest point, indicating that it's the most accurate. However, when you move, your crosshair will become larger, indicating you are becoming more inaccurate. In fact, the space in your crosshair represents the area where your bullets will go when you shoot, so the wider the area, the more inaccurate. For more advanced players, you want to remove your outer lines and turn movement and firing error off. This way your crosshair is always static. For example, even when you're spraying wildly, your crosshair doesn't change, making it easier for you to actually aim and focus on the shots. After researching the current pros, we found that most pros are playing with no movement or firing error, center dot, or outer lines. That being said, the inner lines and center dot are all personal preference. But keep in mind that center dot can possibly cover up an enemy's head, removing an important visual cue telling you when to shoot. Color is also personal preference, but we recommend sticking to a color that stands out on all maps, which is why most pros and streamers stick to green or cyan. You'll want to avoid the yellows and whites because they can easily get lost on some maps. Here's another quick tip. With outer line offset 40, the top outer line with full firing error is the max distance the Vandal's recoil reaches. This can be great for new players that haven't become familiar with recoil control, something we'll be getting into shortly in this guide, as you can spray and use this line to aim for that opponent's head. Alright, for our next tip we have peeking. Peeking is an integral part of the game because being able to peek properly is the difference between taking control of an area or losing a fight to anyone who holds an angle against you no matter how bad they are. Before we get into the different types of peaks, we have three major tips that you need to incorporate into your peaks to help you win more fights. Tip 1. One angle at a time. Watch any of the best players play and you'll notice that every time they peak an angle, they're focused on one common spot before moving to check the next. Don't do what's called a wide peak, where you overexpose yourself to multiple possible enemy angles at once, as this can force you into 1v2s and cause you to have to go for difficult flick shots. Keep your crosshair at head level. Just like we mentioned before, the less you have to move your mouse to hit the headshot, the more likely you are to win the fight. Tip number 3, peek quickly. A common mistake players have is to slow peek angles by walking because they don't want to make noise. But Valorant has a unique mechanic where your character doesn't make its footstep until you have traveled a meter or two first. This means you can walk up to a corner, then quickly peek the corner without actually making noise. This movement is actually crucial for our first peeking technique, Jiggle peeking. Jiggle peeking is used to gain information and is mostly used to gain information when you are forced to peek multiple danger areas at a time. The goal is to peek out, exposing as little of yourself as possible to see where the enemy is and quickly get back behind cover before the enemy can take a shot. This is almost exactly like the strafe shooting technique you just learned. Be careful where you use this though because many of the walls in Valorant can be shot through so make sure you're not overexposing yourself. Next we have the pre-fire peak. This peak is used in conjunction with the jiggle peak and strafe shooting and is best used anytime you know where an enemy is going to be. The goal is to peak the angle as fast as possible as soon as the angle pops into your field of view, change directions to strafe shoot with perfect accuracy. This makes you extremely hard to hit while also being able to kill people with almost no counterplay. And finally the shoulder peak. Shoulder peak is used to bait the first shot 
This technique is the best to use versus enemies with operators, and very difficult angles like Garage on Haven. The goal of the shoulder peek is to peek out just enough to show your shoulder to the enemy and quickly retreat behind cover to bait a reactionary shot from the enemy so you can then re-peek the angle while the enemy is trying to recover. Fights in Valorant are run by very quick margins, so practicing these peaks in the practice mode is crucial. Moving on, we have our ninth tip, recoil control. Recoil control in Valorant is what takes you from being a good aimer to being a good player. A common mistake players make is constantly changing what gun they're using. This is a problem because each weapon has its own recoil pattern, something we'll explain shortly, and consistently using that weapon is necessary to build that muscle memory. For now, we recommend sticking with the Vandal or the Phantom. The Vandal is a one-hit headshot from any distance, but the recoil pattern is a bit more difficult, while the Phantom only one hits with headshots from close range, but has a higher rate of fire and a somewhat easier to control pattern. Pick whichever gun suits your playstyle best and stick to it. To get started learning the recoil control, head into the practice mode and shoot the target with the practice dummy beside it. Aim at the bottom of the target and unload a full magazine without controlling your mouse at all. You'll have a full image of the recoil pattern, and the goal from there is to pull your mouse in the exact opposite of that pattern while firing. We recommend practicing the first 9 bullets at first because they mainly require you to pull down instead of side to side. Set the target to 10 meters and practice pulling down to keep all 9 bullets inside the smallest circle. Once you can do this, then set the target to 20 meters and practice pulling down to keep all 9 bullets inside the second smallest circle. Once you've mastered this, it's time to learn how to control the side to side recoil that occurs after the 9th bullet. This side to side sway is semi random, which means is that it always first moves to the left and then after it moves to the right and then back to the left. However, the randomness is how fast it moves to a side and how soon it changes back in the other direction. Don't worry though, as Valorant developers have actually added a visual aid to help deal with this randomness. While spraying, if you pay attention to the barrel of your gun, it will actually sway in the direction that it's spraying. So when it begins spraying to the left, the barrel moves left, and when it sprays to the right, the barrel actually moves to the right. However, from here, you want to watch your gun's barrel in the peripheral vision. When it sways to the left, you should slightly adjust your mouse to the right. And when it sways to the right, slightly adjust your mouse to the left. This is how you can control the semi-random recoil in Valorant by counteracting the way that the gun is actually swaying. So, in order to control your recoil for the first 9 bullets or so, you can mainly just pull down. Again, set the target to 10 meters and practice controlling your entire spray inside the smallest circle. Then, set the target out to 20 meters and again, practice controlling your entire spray inside the second smallest circle, slowly aiming to get better and better through every repetition. Lastly, for our final tip, how to aim down sights. Aiming down sights by right clicking in Valorant is different than any title has ever handled it. Aiming down sights in Valorant can be different depending on which gun you use, but for the majority of the guns, the only drawback is that the rate of fire is slightly reduced. The main reason people aim down sight is to reduce their weapon recoil, as the tooltip says, but the biggest benefit is less talked about and less known. When aiming down sights in Valorant, the bullet will actually go where your crosshair is. In the recoil control section you notice that you had to pull your crosshair further away from your target to actually get the bullets on target. When scoping, we realize that instead of pulling the crosshair away, we're pulling the crosshair back to the target. Because of this, when in those long lasting engagements, aiming down sights allows you to see where you're missing your shots to and quickly correct your crosshair back to the enemy. It ends up being almost the same mouse movement that you were using in the recoil control section, but the visual cue makes aiming so much easier. So while the rate of fire is very important in closer engagements under 20 meters, at long distances past that, being accurate is far more important. And that's when you want to be aiming down sights to correct that recoil back onto the target. Studies have repeatedly shown that the effectiveness of your practice relies far less on how long you practice, but rather consistent daily practice in focused short bursts is the key. With that being said, focusing heavily on this efficient 30 minute practice routine before you play will help you improve much faster than someone practicing for hours in a row without any kind of structure. First. 
begin warming up by spawning all of the bots, making sure they have armor on, grab a vandal, and focus on clicking heads for 5 minutes. Don't try to go too fast here, you're really just warming up your body and your mind while ingraining the core movements of aiming into your muscle memory. Next, set practice mode to eliminate 50. Now, start to try to hit headshots on the bots as fast as you can. Do this for 5 minutes so you can start pushing yourself to develop faster and faster reactions. After this, set bot speed to hard. It's okay to set it to medium if hard is a bit too difficult, but the goal here is to really push yourself. This will force you to flick as fast as you can to have any chance of killing the bots, honing your reaction times, and getting you to trust in your flick. This is a solid 15 minute routine designed at improving pure accuracy. Next, set practice mode to eliminate 50 and enable bot strafing. Here, you work on your tracking. Aim at the bot's head, doing your best to keep your crosshair on top of it as it strafes back and forth. For an added challenge, begin moving around the bot in a circle. Do this for 5 minutes, all while maintaining your crosshair on the bot's head as best as possible. Next, we work on our peaking and strafe shooting. Set the practice mode to eliminate 50, move yourself back and either to the left or right to get behind the corners, then practice jiggle peaking and strafe shooting. Scanning one angle at a time until you spot an enemy bot and fire. As soon as you fire, move back behind cover and repeat the process. Make sure you practice different peaks and practice this from both the left and the right side. You're going to want to do this routine for about 5 minutes as well. And lastly, you want to head to the target that shows your recoil patterns. Either select the Vandal or the Phantom, depending on your preference. Set the target to 20 meters, practice unloading an entire clip and controlling the recoil so the bullets are always inside the second smallest circle. Again, do this for 5 minutes. Ultimately, by following this skill-capped 30-minute practice routine every day, your aim will not only improve dramatically, but you'll also master every single aiming technique needed for you to constantly win gunfights and top frag in your games. So what tip did you find the most useful? Let us know in the comment section below as I'd love to hear it. Make sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon, and like the video. We are just getting started here at Skillcapped and have a ton more comprehensive, premium guides that will help you improve, win more games, and get you to the top of the kills on your team. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you for watching and good luck in your games.